I was going to brush up the hair and, uh, you know, tr do the beard a little bit, make it look nice, look presentable for you guys. But then I just thought, hey, if there is uh, any list that justifies wild hair, it's going to be this one. Good evening, campers, dreamers, and babysitters, and welcome back to another recommendation list. This time, we are taking a look at five films that you should watch before checking out the new film, Werewolves, that'll be out this Friday. Yeah, guys, this is one I'm totally excited for. I have been basically chomping at the bit at this thing for about two years. I follow the director, Stephen C. Miller, on all social media. And when he announced that he was doing a werewolf movie, oh my god, I was so excited. I love werewolf movies. If you guys have been watching the channel for a bit, you know that. But, man, I never could have imagined that we would get the opportunity that we have here today. And, uh, yeah, let's talk about it a little bit. So not only can I say that we have seen the film and that our review will be coming out later this week... We actually had the opportunity to sit down with the director, Stephen C. Miller, and interview him. So not only will we have a full interview for that coming later this week as well, he's going to be getting in on the top five action. And yes, after I give my five films that you should watch before you see Werewolves, Stephen C. Miller, the director, the writer, the man himself, is going to be giving his five films. Yeah, I am uh, really excited for this. I hope that this idea pans out and maybe I can try to uh, do it again down the road. Again, this is just special circumstances that we just so happen to get to speak with him and uh, get to know him a little bit. So, Stephen, if you're watching this, thank you so much for the opportunity. And yeah, if you're new here and uh, you don't know anything about our channel, Thank you for stopping by. I hope you enjoy this video. And if you think we deserve it, I would appreciate it if you could leave this video a like. It helps with the algorithm as well as hit that subscribe button so we can bring you more and constant horror content. All right. Now that all that's out of the way, let's hop into this list. Kicking things off with number five, we have 2014's The Purge Anarchy. Three groups of people intertwine and are left stranded in the streets on Purge Night trying to survive the chaos and violence that occurs. When the trailer for Werewolves dropped, it was getting compared to The Purge for many, many reasons. One of the big ones being, of course, Frank Grillo was in two, I believe, of The Purge movies. I kind of stopped after this one, admittedly. Um, so let me know if they're worth watching. I, I might go back to them. But anyway, The Purge Anarchy. This is a movie that I was, you know, not super stoked about. I, I didn't think that it was going to be very good. You know, I liked the first Purge movie. I thought it was a really cool concept. And, you know, I was just like, yeah, that's neat. I like the kind of home invasion thing you did there. This felt like it was going to be going way too far. But I must say, I got dragged to the theater by some friends. And I had a good time with The Purge Anarchy. And I've watched it a few times since this. And, and it's a lot of fun with this concept. Again, actually doing what I was afraid it was going to do, but showing that I was totally wrong. Because opening this up and showing what Purge Night is outside of the house is really cool. When you actually get some characters that you like following, uh, the main one being Leo, of course, played by Frank Grillo. And I thought that he was excellent in this. I mean, seriously... This was one of those things for me that if we didn't already have a perfectly cast Punisher in the MCU and he didn't already have a role in this, I would say that you need to make Frank Grillo the Punisher because I was getting so many Punisher vibes from this movie and he's great. I really fell for his character. I felt like the revenge arc for him was cool. I loved how they wrapped it up. And all in all, I think that this is a really fun film with some pretty cool kills. And, you know, it does a really good job of kind of, again, opening the idea, but still keeping it focused on the characters, which are, of course, the most important. And I think when it comes to werewolves, you're going to be looking at a film where you're going to be kind of running through the streets of this city, trying to hide from these massive beasts. You know, it's just uh, like that, except not werewolves. You're running from people and psychos and all kinds of people who are just like, hey, we got a free pass to murder some folks. Let's take advantage of it. Moving into my number four pick with 2015's Howl. When passengers on a train are attacked by a creature, they must band together in order to survive until morning. 2015's Howl was admittedly, again, not trying to be super negative on this list, guys. I like these movies. 
a movie I wasn't super big on the first time I saw it. Yeah, I was a little turned off by the werewolves in this. I was a little bit like, oh no, they're they're not the werewolves I was hoping for. I like my long snouted, you know, beastly looking creatures. But something about werewolf movies, man, they just draw me in. And I don't know what it was, but the second time I saw this movie, I was so invested. I thought the creatures looked way better. I don't know, maybe I was just in a bad headspace the first time I watched it. It happens. But Howl really won my heart on that second viewing. And I think it's something that I'm comfortable enough to recommend for werewolf fans and fans of just really tense thrillers. I like the setting of this. I always really enjoyed that from the concept with being this train that's just out in the middle of the woods and they're just trapped there. And I think that uh, it's definitely plays up that tension really well. It does lose me a little bit with some of the CGI werewolf stuff, but I think that there is enough good effects in here to kind of make up for it, especially because these werewolves are hulking presences. They have kind of a different thing going for them than your stereotypical werewolf, which again, I'm a little bit more partial to, but I think that they absolutely nail the tension of this. Um, they absolutely nail the gore and the violence for this, because yes, this is a gory movie, and I think it's just a lot of fun what they do with this concept. There is some imagery in here that's definitely stuck in my brain, and I think that this is totally an underrated werewolf movie that uh, you should give a chance to. And I think right before you see werewolves, if you want to get exposed to something kind of new, kind of fresh, this is one that I would totally recommend. Howling our way into the number three spot with 1981's Escape from New York. In 1997, when the US president crashes into Manhattan, now a giant maximum security prison, a convicted bank robber is sent in to rescue him. Hey, you know, if I am recommending a Carpenter film on one of these lists and comparing it to a property, there's a pretty good chance that uh, it's it's got some good reasons, some good ties. Because yes, I think that werewolves absolutely like radiates the aura of Escape from New York in many of those sequences that you see later on in the film. As our characters are kind of making their way through the post-apocalyptic streets of whatever this supermoon werewolf apocalypse is, we are basically privy to a different world, an underground society, things that are kind of, you know, adapting in different ways. Uh, all these things you've seen in the trailer, but, you know, I'm not going to dive too deep into them, of course. But Escape from New York was something that was absolutely running through my mind through many of these sequences. It's just basically like that, but with werewolves. And that's awesome. I love that. If they would have just had, you know... Uh, our boy Kurt Russell fighting next to Frank Grillo would have been a perfect film. I would have given it nothing more than uh, all of the credit I can, even though I kind of love it. But point is, Escape from New York is one of my favorites from Carpenter. It's not necessarily a horror film. I mean, there might be some B kind of horror genre things you can throw in there. But this movie just exudes awesomeness this is one of the pinnacle action films of the early 80s and you absolutely have a wonderful cast here as well to back that up everybody like i said kurt russell lee van cleef donald pleasance i mean isaac hayes shows up in this movie for a bit uh we have of course the great adrian barbeau and harry dean stanton to go along with it many other fresh faces like tom adkins and charles seif pop up in this thing as well it's just an all-around perfectly cast movie with a really simple concept that they execute to a T. This is one of the must-see action dystopian films in my book. I adore Escape from New York. It's got so much energy, so much atmosphere, and really just a great concept executed beautifully from the legend of horror himself. Clawing our way into the number two spot with 2014's Late Phases. When deadly beasts attack from the forest, it is up to a grizzled veteran to uncover what the residents of a secluded retirement community are hiding. Yes, I'm excited to talk about all of these movies on this list, but Late Phases, even more so I think than my number one pick, 
I'm really excited to talk about. This is an awesome werewolf film, guys. This is something that, just like Howl, I feel like has fallen under the radar for so many people, but even in the description, it doesn't do it justice, because what we're dealing with here is a man, a veteran, who's going into this retirement community, and he's blind. The dude is blind, and he's going up against practical effects heavy werewolves yes this movie has excellent very unique looking practical effects werewolves and they do not skimp on those practical effects which is totally why i'm including it on this list because of course with werewolves one of the big pushing points is these practical effects werewolves that they're basically going to say are taking over the screen for 90% of the film. And I think that this is an excellent little sister film that you can throw into this. I mean, the werewolves admittedly are a bit strange looking, but I kind of love them for that. They are a flavor of their own. And I think that this movie just exudes so much creativity and so much freshness from this concept. This is the kind of werewolf film that we need more of. Somebody who's not afraid to take a really deep story of like, a guy who's basically aging out, getting stuffed into a retirement home, uh, a la Bubba Hotep in some ways, and uh, just having to go up against this supernatural society and force. I mean, this is certainly something that you're going to need to seek out and watch if you're a werewolf fan. I'm sure if you are, you've already seen it, but if this is one that's kind of missed you, I, I think you need to go and seek this out before you see werewolves 100%. Transforming our way into the final spot. Yes, number one. And there can truly only be one film that I recommend even more than any of the rest on this list. And I think many of you know what that's going to be. Because when you're talking about badass, action-packed werewolf movies, you of course cannot go without talking about 2002's Dog soldiers. A routine military exercise turns into a nightmare in the Scottish wilderness. Dog Soldiers is one of, if not in the top three, greatest werewolf movies of all time, in my opinion. This movie is so fun, so scary, so beautifully executed and I adore it from every single frame imaginable. I think that this is such a fun idea. It feels like you're ripping it straight out of 1981 with just having these soldiers that are on a routine military expedition. You know, they're just out there training, and they get basically stuck in this farmhouse with large, ginormous like hulking werewolves stomping around the house, stomping around the building, trying to get in, trying to kill them. It's fucking amazing, guys. I love dog soldiers. There is so much energy in this film, so much freshness the first time you sit down and experience it. It's, again, from the director Neil Marshall, so it has those scares. It has that just humor that I love from his kind of films. And I think that this is all around a film that understands werewolves. It understands just how exciting this genre can really be when you tackle a creature like this. And because I've seen werewolves, I can easily say that uh, Stephen C. Miller's Werewolves, it lives up to that. It's a movie that understands what kind of a werewolf movie it is, what it's trying to be, and it aces it. And I think that this is a perfect perfect side piece to just throw on either before or after you go see werewolves there's a lot of action lots of gore and of course lots of werewolf goodness involved i love so much of this movie i watch it at least once a year and yeah it's certainly one that i have no problem with recommending to people whenever i get the chance that concludes my five picks, so I'm going to send this thing over to the interview where I talk with Stephen C. Miller about the five films he would recommend that you check out before you see Werewolves. Okay, easy. So I think I think you've got to start off with American Werewolf in London. I think you've got to start there because classic werewolf movie, but the tone of the movie, which is it doesn't take itself too seriously. It mm -hmm. has some fun, and the werewolf transformation is great. It also does a great job of tension before the first transformation happens um and so i think that's a good place to start and then i i would throw in a movie like the original terminator 
And I would throw in the original Terminator because it's a scrappy indie movie that gives you some great visuals, some great tension, great action. Um, But the human level there in the original Terminator is so good. The characters are rich. You, You really feel for Sarah Connor and what she's going through. And I think to me, it's a great movie to sort of preface ours. And then I'm going to have to say you got to watch Dog Soldiers because Dog Soldiers is definitely a movie for me when it comes to werewolves and how they look. That was a big thing for us. Watch Dog Soldiers for that. Then I'm going to say Underworld. And I'm going to say Underworld because Underworld does such a great job of mixing genres. Um, And I think that is something werewolves does uh, where it has fun, but it tries to scare the shit out of you. And then it's got action and then it's back to horror. I think that's something that for me um, is a good watch. And so my final one would be, you got to go big, you got to go loud and I'm going to go Pacific Rim. And I'm going to say Pacific Rim because it's a total popcorn movie. And it's a movie you're going to the theater, you're hoping to chop some popcorn, you're hoping to have a lot of fun. And to me, that's what I my set out for Werewolves was I wanted the audience to have as much fun as possible in the theater and to kind of get rowdy. And I think this movie could be rowdy. And so I think I those are the sort of movies that when I was wa- when I was in the process of making the movie, those were movies I watched and to sort of get my tone, get some of my shots down, think about how I wanted to make the movie. Those were those were the lists that I was thinking of. And there you have it, folks. That is the end of this recommendation list. This was certainly a huge labor of love. I was very, very excited to tackle this. And again, having Stephen C. Miller, the director of Werewolves, come on to talk about some recommendations, I think just makes this super special. Even if this video like completely tanks and doesn't do well, if and if it got like 10 views, I would still be so proud of just how this has come together, and I hope I did it justice in the edit. Only you can tell me. But uh, yeah, guys, this was super fun. I thank you so much for sitting back and talking some werewolf films, some action films, and just some horror films in general. And yeah, this was this was great. This was a lot of fun. So if, again, you are new to the channel and you just discovered us, I thank you so much for making it to this point in the video. If you could please leave a like and hit that subscribe button, it would truly mean the world and yeah guys i'll be back next week with another recommendation list Uh, i don't know what exactly i'm gonna do just yet i got a couple in mind but i might just have to throw it up to a poll so we'll see what happens but other than that that's everything we got for the werewolves list definitely go out this friday and check it out reserve your tickets now and uh yeah i can't wait to talk more werewolves with you guys this week so We'll see you next time, and uh, yeah, I guess that wraps it up for me. So until then, I'm Dylan Newell, and remember, stay scared. Do the horse shit, gonna do it live. Press splatter cast ticket every day they live. Smash your ass.